The Mecklenburg County election debates are a service of WTVI, Mecklenburg County, and the League of Women Voters of Charlotte Mecklenburg. The views and opinions expressed in these debates are those of the candidates and do not necessarily represent the views of WTVI, its management, Mecklenburg County, or the League of Women Voters. Hello, I'm Rob Bouvier with News 14 Carolina. In the next 15 minutes, we'll speak with each of the four Republican candidates running for Mecklenburg County Commission District 5. All of the questions come from the League of Women Voters, and the candidates haven't heard them in advance. They will have 60 seconds to answer each of the questions. They will have two 30-second challenges. If they wish to challenge another candidate's response, they must hold up a yellow challenge card. The candidates are Sarah Cherney, Bill Griffin, Ken Lindham, and Matthew Reidenauer. And we'll dive right into the questions here. What makes you the best candidate for Mecklenburg County Commission District 5? Ms. Cherney. Well, I think what makes me the best candidate for the Mecklenburg County Commission is my experience in the nonprofit sector. I'm a, a prior uh, nonprofit CEO. I have experience in social services, and I deeply understand the needs of this community. And I have experience building budgets, um, million dollar budgets, as well as administrating from those budgets. Uh, I care very deeply about what's happening in this community, and I am, I'm experienced, and um, I believe that this experience, as well as my understanding of uh, needs, uh, make me the best candidate for, for this particular role. Mr. Griffin. I own and operate the business that I opened and started 30 years ago. I have met payroll for 30 years. I have helped and worked with physically and financially challenged nonprofits all of my adult life. My hope is that I can continue my service to my fellow man, which is what I started as a young adult, the reason that I started my company, Griffin Home Healthcare, to serve the needs of this community and this region, serving the medical equipment needs. So I feel like that Bill Griffin is the best candidate because I have served the needs in this community. I have been active in various and sundry nonprofit worlds, been active in my church. I was born and raised in this community, went to Mecklenburg County Schools, and Bill Griffin is certainly the best candidate of all the candidates that are running. Mr. Lindham. Thank you. Um, I believe I'm the best candidate for this position because I've lived in this district for 20 years. I've been a homeowner in this district for over 20 years. I've had two children go through the Charlotte Mecklenburg school system for the last 14 years. I've operated the business where I've been developing residential communities, where I've built communities over uh, 200 uh, unit subdivisions, where I've done with, dealt with the uh, local, state, and federal uh, regulatory agencies and worked through the minutia of getting things approved and getting things passed through city councils and county commissions. I feel, I feel it's a very, very important that we focus on the fact that we have people that lived in the community for a long period of time, so they've seen the growth over the last 20 years that has grown so quickly in this, uh, in this community. Mr. Rodenauer. Thank you very much. I was born in District 5. I went to high school in District 5, and I currently live there now. Um, I know the issues that are facing our community very well. Um, I've seen Charlotte grow from, from uh, when Valentine was nothing but a couple of streets and a couple big pylons, and everybody was wondering what was going on down there in, in South Charlotte. Um, and I've seen our community grow, but with its growth, I've seen uh, the issues that, are, that have arisen as well. And uh, I've got a solution to, to, to solve those problems. It's called zero-based budgeting, which I, I hope we get some questions on that later on today. Um, I currently serve in the United States Marine Corps. I've been in for 11 years. I'm a uh, staff sergeant in the Marines. I'm our company gunnery sergeant as well, so I've got 130 Marines in my charge. Um, and I volunteered for two tours of duty to Iraq. Um, I'm the local guy who, who's been involved with local politics since 2008. Uh, working for various candidates, uh, ran in 2009 myself, and uh, I know the community, I know our issues, and I'm offering solutions and leadership, and I think that's why Matthew Reidenauer is the best candidate for District 5. Thank you. CMS has asked for an additional $27.5 million, primarily to fund a 3% pay raise for teachers. Do you support this increase? If yes, how would you pay for it? If no, why not? Again, we'll go back to Ms. Cherney. Well, um, I believe that our teachers in our school systems are our greatest asset, and I certainly uh, feel that they deserve a raise. However, I believe with the tax crisis 
that District 5 specifically is experiencing, this would be um, detrimental to, to um, ask for higher taxation uh, for the residents to actually pay for this raise. I believe that if the school system thinks that the school teachers are their greatest asset as well, that they should somehow work within their budgetary limits uh, as managers of, of the, the, the money that is delegated to them from the state and from the county uh, to find a way to um, provide support to their teachers. There are other ways other than just a raise. There could be bonus, one-time bonus situations that I think would, would support and assist their teachers. Um, but I, I certainly agree with that. But at this particular time, I do not think that um, proposed tax increase to our constituency would be a solution um, that would be viable. Mr. Griffin. Rob, I am all about our teachers getting raises. It's been too long, it's been far too long that our teachers have gone without some sort of an increase. I think what we have to realize is that 56% of the Mecklenburg County school budget comes from Raleigh. However, the mandate is about 90 to 93% that comes from Raleigh. I would go to the General Assembly and I would start with the Mecklenburg delegation, trying to work towards efficiencies and effectiveness so that the Charlotte Mecklenburg School Board and the decision makers here on a local level, getting only 56% of that budget from Raleigh can make more decisions on a local level. What happens in Raleigh, what happens in Eastern North Carolina isn't necessarily what's good for Western North Carolina or for the mid-region. So I believe that our job is to go to, uh, to, to work with the General Assembly and see if we can't change that to give more autonomy to the people in Charlotte Mecklenburg School Board. Mr. Lindholm. Yes, uh, my name's uh, Lindholm. Lindholm, I Thank am you. so sorry. That's okay. Um, I, do, I do support the additional $27 million. But nobody has said that that $27 million is going to be a tax increase on the residents of Mecklenburg County. I believe that we cannot say, tell the teachers who spend the time in the classroom with our children, who are the most important asset for the future of this community, that they, cannot, they will not get raises for a fourth year in a row. I believe it's important that we look at the budget as a whole, the budget system as a whole, because the school system is charged with creating their budget prior to the county creating their budget, prior to the state creating their budget. Therefore, the school system is, is forced to create a budget based on information they don't know what their final numbers are going to be. I think that that's a situation needs to change and, and work together to come up with a solution that benefits uh, the community as, at large. Mr. Ridenauer. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a, it's a shame that there t our teachers have not had a cost of living increase since the 2008-2009 school year. I know if I had gone that long without a cost of living increase, I'd be pretty upset about that too, and I can completely relate and, and understand. Uh, at the same time, I don't think that the, the answer is for the CMS to be coming to the county asking for additional dollars. Um, I think that right now with the fiscally unsure waters that we are treading in. I think that we are, are, are would be embarking on a dangerous path to continue to provide the lifeline uh, to CMS every time they need to find additional dollars. Um, they need to look within their own budget and, and go line by line and find where they can cut programs uh, and, and that way they can provide the raises that the teachers most certainly deserve. Thank you. Are county property owners overtaxed, particularly in your district, why or why not? Ms. Cherney. Um, yes, they are. And 89.3% of the residents uh, in District 5 have uh, received a significant tax increase. And, uh, and through research, what we found is that 50% uh, uh, of the revenue base of the entire county comes from Districts 5 and 6. And uh, I believe that much of this has taken place with the recent tax evaluation um, th and that so many people in our community are up, up in arms over. What I can share with you is from my, my work with the community is that we don't mind paying our fair share of taxes, uh, but we also want to make sure that on the back end of that, that our, our tax dollars are being used um, in accountable ways and, and being administered um, to provide the services that we know are needed in this community. But yes, we are uh, um, unfairly taxed, and I think that's certainly something that's a concern and something the Commission needs to address and it's something I hope to do as um, the commissioner for District 5. Mr. Griffin. I, like Ms. Cherney, am all about paying my fair share. I also agree that we also, in both the 5th and the 6th districts of this county, and even many of the residents in the 1st district of this county, 
pay entirely too much of the burden and, and wear and bear too much of the burden for this county. So it would be my plan, my hope, that we can work with the General Assembly, and it's already started, to look at the reevaluation process. It's a, a two-sided sword because there is cost in reevaluation and going out there and evaluating our property. But I do believe that we have to look at the process, this broken, misguided process, so that we have fairness in all sections of Charlotte-Mecklenburg in our reevaluation process. Mr. Lindholm. Yes, I, I believe that the people that I've talked to in District 5, it's not about necessarily that are they overtaxed. It's what's the return on the investment. I believe that the recent reevaluation of the properties, which is studies, has studies and information has, has uh, borne light on, is that what they didn't follow their own guidelines. They didn't follow their own procedures in the process. I had a 45-minute conversation with Ms. Ms. Davis over off Queens Road and going uh, point by point on how the, the, uh, auditors, the assessor's office went about the reevaluation, which wasn't done properly. I think we have to, have to look at the entire process and, how, and, and figure out what we're going to do because the city has indicated they're going to throw another 9% on top of that. So I think, it's, I think the key important thing is not so much as cutting the taxes, but it's, it's what's the return on the investment that we're making. Mr. Ridenauer? Well, I'll just go ahead and disagree. I think that the uh, that we we do need to look at cutting taxes and not just simply say, well, we're paying our fair share and that's 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 good enough, um, folks. We do have a spending problem in Mecklenburg County, and I think that we can all uh, recognize that and identify that. The problem is with with the county budget, as as it is for many other budgets, is that ac across the country is the. Mecklenburg County budget is carried over from one year to the next year with, with only modest adjustments based on current economic factors. That is not a good way to budget if you're trying to identify where the excess spending is and where the government waste is. I propose zero-based budgeting. Zero-based budgeting is where you start your budget at zero dollars and line by line all expenses must be justified for return on investment to the taxpayer and must also be justified for efficiency uh, of the program. And as zero-based budgeting will identify those excess spending programs, we can cut those programs, and then we can lower your taxes. And that's, that's how I propose we lower taxes. Okay, now we go to your 30-second closing statements, and we'll go to Sarah Cherney. Um, well, thank you. Um, um, I believe that I am a, um, a prime candidate for this particular role due to my experience um, as a CEO. Uh, I have experience leading through financial turbulence in two nonprofits, two national nonprofits. And as we've discussed today, there are many issues that we've, we've talked about today. Uh, I've led organizations through similar issues. Uh, my hope is that others would recognize that, and I think that's true as I've received the endorsement of the current chair uh, for District 5, Neil Cooksey. My hope is that uh, people will look up my information online, uh, sarahcherney.com, and I, I ask for your vote on May 8th. Bill Griffin. This election is all about jobs, and it's about the economy. Yes, it's about our children, and it's about schools. I'm the only one that's sitting in this forum today who has run his own business and met payroll for 30 years, worked with financially challenged nonprofits. I've worked with the misguided Medicare competitive bidding. I've, I've served Medicaid patients. I've served veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your candidate for District 5 Mecklenburg County Commission because of my experience because of my leadership. Ken, thank, you. thank you, sir. Ken Lindholm. Thank you. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, this afternoon and to speak with you all. I believe I'm the best candidate because I've li lived in this community and uh, for 20 years. I believe that it's important that we've been involved with the community as a whole, uh, through our church at Myers Park Presbyterian, through our school, South, Mech, South Mecklenburg High School, and the, and the other activities that we are involved with at the YMCA and otherwise. I believe it's an important time for this, for this district to, to look, at, look at a more moderate voice in the, in the district. Thank you and have a great day. Matthew Ridenauer. Thank you. I appreciate you all tuning in and watching the debate this afternoon. Um, I believe that my proven leadership in the Marine Corps, I uh, lead 130 guys. I'm not responsible just for, for their equipment and for their training, but I'm responsible for their very lives. I've handled budgets. I work in the accounting department of a, an international medical supplier.
Um, I'm offering real leadership and real solutions. If you visit my website, MatthewRidenhour.com, you'll see a lot of those solutions presented. And I believe that uh, I can be a voice for this district because I grew up here and I know the district very well. And I'd like to be your voice on county commission because it's not the commissioner's seat, it's your seat. Thank you. And thank you, Republican candidates for County Commission District 5. Uh, don't forget to vote on Tuesday, May 8th. For more information on the candidates and issues, go to wtvi.org debates. Thank you.